Oh, the lives he's touched. Storied accomplishments already written in the history books. It's the story of an unsure boy who grew into an accomplished man and mended more than his share of broken hearts. This is the story of Denton Cooley. Well, I was rather insecure. I was only 16 years old when I went up to college and I was rather timid. And I knew that I had to study hard to be a physician. And I found out that maybe my uh, grades were way above what my classmates were. And I thought, well, I, if they can do it, I certainly know I can do it. Born in the boom and bust of the 1920s, Denton Cooley grew up in Houston and nearly followed in the footsteps of his father, a prominent dentist. But another destiny awaited. He always expressed some regret that he didn't go through medical school. It was always my hope to become a physician. Although I went to Austin, the university, uh, originally in a pre-dental course. And I was planning to stay up there two years and then go to dental school. Then I began playing varsity basketball and the coach enticed me to stay on for four full years to use up my athletic eligibility. And by then I was committed to going on to medical school. I did apply to Tulane and to the UTMB. And when I got accepted both places, there's no question in my mind that I chose UTMB. Uh, but uh, I attended every one of the operations that I could, standing up in the stall, watching Dr. Singleton sulcerizing a tibia for osteomyelitis. And uh, I was fascinated by the whole surgical scene and the, the teamwork that uh, went with surgery. After two years on the Galveston shore, young Cooley headed up north to Johns Hopkins. There, a mentor by the name of Alfred Blaylock nurtured his talents and inspired many of his triumphs. Dr. Blaylock had his big surgical uh, clinic every Friday at noon. And sure enough, <laughs> uh, after he finished his clinic, he was walking across the courtyard and he saw me playing tennis out there. He said, Miss Cooley, can I speak to you? And I said, yes, sir. He said, you play a pretty good game of tennis, Mr. Cooley, do you play ping pong? That initial accidental meeting would prove pivotal. You see, Blaylock himself, a pioneer in heart surgery, took Cooley under his wing. And it was then that he discovered his true passions. They were just inspiring, you know. And from that point forward, most of the surgery we did was all uh, what I call closed heart surgery on the surface of the heart. The surface indeed. The 1960s rolled around, the dawn of heart transplants. You see, I'm 50 years old. I naturally wouldn't want to, I wouldn't be thinking of uh, running foot races or anything like this. All I want to do is just lead a normal life. On May 3rd, 1968, Denton Cooley made history. It's just amazing that all the things that we've been able to witness. We had a patient who had advanced heart disease. We got a donor heart uh, from a, a young girl. Uh, who had taken her own life. I took this man's heart out and sewed this girl's heart in there. And I tell you, one of the most exciting times of my life, and the biggest relief I almost ever had, was to take the clamp off the aorta, restore the coronary circulation into that donor heart, and see the thing slowly begin to work again. And by the next 30 minutes, that heart was just doing beautifully and so on. It was really an exciting, experience. I don't think anything can, can compare with it. In 1969, another Cooley milestone. He was the first surgeon to transplant an artificial heart in man. The possibility has now been established uh, as a reality, the fact that Mr. Carp uh, has regained uh, organ function in terms of cerebral function and kidney function indicates that it's a mechanical heart is a feasibility. His legacy is embedded in hearts everywhere. From correcting congenital heart disease in newborns side by side with Blaylock, 
to full-on heart transplants he helped to perfect. From the Texas Heart Institute he built to the medical minds he continues to inspire. Cooley's ingenuity and curiosity about the inner workings of the human heart have saved thousands of lives. It used to be that the doctor had a little black case uh, with his stethoscope and his uh, stigma manometer in it and a few basic medications, and that was medicine. But now today, look at the things we're doing. For miracles like these, we have legends like Denton Cooley to thank. In return, he says future healers can honor these advances with their own dedication, curiosity, and never-ending quest for greatness. Well, I've always thought, and I take my inspiration from other surgeons, that maybe I started a school of surgery, and that people, and my trainees and so on, people that have been exposed to our program here, will go out and say that they learned their surgery uh, from Denton Cooley. There's no question in my mind. I just marvel at the things that have happened to me. The opportunities that I have had to meet all these fabulous people, all the crowned heads and presidents of nations and so on. After all, I'm just another surgeon from South Texas. <laughs>